What's up everyone, it's your boy Scott, and today we're continuing down our path of the Gundam franchise with another entry from the alternate century, one that I feel could have had more impact on the franchise if his time wasn't cut short. Because much like other members of the AC which are standalone titles, it brings a whole new perspective to the story we know and love while making it accessible to viewers who experience Gundam without the commitment of the Universal Century to truly enjoy it. First and foremost, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Right Stuff Anime and their publishing company Nozomi Entertainment for providing me with a copy of today's feature for review. Be sure to check out the link below if you're interested in purchasing today's feature or any other Gundam series in the franchise. Right Stuff is your one-stop shop for anime, manga, figures, and more, and no matter what you're looking for, they got you covered. I'm also proud to be an affiliate. For today's feature, we're taking a look at a Gundam series that shows us a familiar story, but this time it's in the post-apocalypse. Welcome to After War Gundam X. One thing that tends to get overlooked in the Universal Century, or sometimes just Gundam in general, is that when colonies are dropped, things still look normal in the Gundam world. Gundam X, on the other hand, took a more realistic approach per se by showing us a Gundam world post-apocalypse, or at least a more directive approach after the damage and devastation was done. Because it's Gundam, the overtones of war and politics of course is still there, but this time we're dealing with a Mad Max or Fist of the North Star type of approach of people in a desolate and destroyed planet fighting over land, food, water, and supremacy. The Gundams in the series are ones that were either scavenged from the remains of the war or the property of former soldiers who went into isolation and they use it as a key to survival. The story of 1996's After War Gundam X takes place in an undetermined year, but we do know that it's been 15 years since there was a war between the Earth and space colonies. This timeline was dubbed AW for After War. The year is now 0015, a war that started 15 years ago prior with a single colony fighting for independence spirals into a battle so devastating that it left almost all of humanity on the brink of extinction due to mass colony droppage. Jeez. I guess in this series just one wasn't enough. Enter Garrett Ran, a war orphan who has immense knowledge when it comes to mobile suits. Looking to make a quick buck, he's hired by a mysterious man to rescue a girl named Tifa from a warship called the Freedon. When he returns, Tifa is so devastated and frightened by this man that she's overcome with fear and Garrett reads the room and hightails it out of there with her. But there's more than meets the eye with this young girl as she exhibits a strange power that is all too familiar to veteran Gundam watchers. Using her ability to escape safely, Garrett ends up at the old Federation factory where he's led to a relic of the past war, the Gundam X. From here the battle of power rages between Garrett and the ragtag crew of the Freedon versus bad guys who like to loot, plunder, and aim to dominate this war-torn world. In addition to trying to apprehend Tifa back for the power that she holds, while the Freedon crew aims to keep her safe because of her importance. Starring a ragtag cast of nomads and nobles, Gundam X focuses more on the cast as a crew on a starship versus being full on about an individual pilot. Even though Garrett is still in the forefront of the series as he's brought into the crew, he's one of my favorite pilots because of what he brings to the table. Unlike other pilots or protagonists in the Gundam franchise, he didn't just happen to fall into the robot and the fate of the world is thrust on his shoulders, but rather he finds the X and fixes it himself to make a living, and he just so happens to be very good at what he does. Trouble comes in from the power struggle of how powerful the X is in this battle ravaged world where only a strong survives, thus other attempts to take it from him is usually what this story is about until it breaks into bigger things. I very much like the cast in this series. Even more than the suits themselves actually. The suits and X just felt like they were rehashes of the suits that we saw in Gundam Wing. Take the Leopard for example, it's almost blatantly just a repaint of the heavy arms. Even the antagonist suits share similarities to the Epion from Gundam Wings as well. The X is the sole standout of the series and easily the most outstanding design in all of Gundam. With the satellite backpack generator that it has, it just leaves me in awe every time it shoots a blast. It's also in my top 5 favorite Gundam suits of all time. Captain Jamil is also another one of my favorite characters especially in this series as he comes off as mysterious at first. 
And once you find out his involvement in the war and the weight he holds on his shoulders from the regret, you can kind of relate to why he wants to protect Tifa no matter what. His resentment with himself and his drive to want to change everything because he feels that this is all his fault makes him a very captivating character and you look forward to seeing him every time. I expected a lot more out of Roby and Wits though. At first with them being main Gundam pilots I just thought they were going to have more of an impact on the series. At first they just end up being grunts and recycled suits with not much to write home about. Wits' air master and the jet transformation was cool, but again, Roby's Gundam Leopard was just a blatant knockoff of the heavy arms with a new paint job. But once they got their featured episodes where they explain why they're doing what they're doing and why they are the way they are, I actually started to care about them a little bit more along with the rest of the cast as they were no longer so one-dimensional with just making money as their only focus. In fact, the development of almost everyone you encounter on the Freedon is among the best in the entire franchise. This setting and the world can be very heavy and somber, and everyone here has truly lost something to this war and that changed their entire world. Everybody's going through the same thing in their own ways, and each person not only deals with it in their own way, but they grow as well, especially Garrett and these two guys as the series progresses. Meanwhile, dual antagonists the Frost Brothers, who remind me of the McDougal Brothers from Outlaw Star remain a constant threat throughout the series. Although they're hired to do the job that Garrett didn't finish, it's their own sinister agenda and abilities that are the real threat. After War also brings in an aspect back from the original lore that was pretty much forgotten in the alternate century, New Types, and their impact in the power struggle. New Types are a staple in the Universal Century and they're involved in every major aspect of it and are a big reason the Universal Century became the war that it is. New types are completely ignored in the alternate century though, that is until Gundam X, and once again it shows the importance of these enhanced beings and what they mean to humanity. This series ran for 39 episodes after being cut from a full run of 50 due to a drastic drop in viewership from the series which occurred very early in the show's run. There are a few things that could have factored into this happening. The biggest may be that it followed directly after Gundam Wing, one of the most popular and beloved Gundam series still today. And that's a hard act to follow, especially when it comes to sheer popularity. Another factor also could be Gundam fatigue. Even though the franchise itself is vast and has over a 40 year history at this point with OVAs and full series entries, there's still a bit of a gap between how Gundam was distributed. X aired at the end of the most consecutive series runs of back-to-back -back shows for the franchise. There was no break in the alternate century as it kicked off with G Gundam in 1994, followed by Gundam Wing in 95, and then Gundam X in 96, all airing only a month after the last series ended. It wasn't until 1999's Turn 8 Gundam that we returned to Gundam with a full order of 50 episodes. One thing this series can take credit for is one of the greatest memes about playing Overwatch in any team game where the healer has to do his job a little bit more than they should have and end up having to get their hands dirty. The animation quality sticks out in this series as well when comparing it to other entries, especially when it comes to the action scenes and I can't prop up enough how good it looks when the Gundam X does fire off a satellite cannon. When the X is on the field it just steals a show. Another thing I didn't enjoy was the ending theme. Much like 0083, they went with this 80s, 90s era all English ballad like you would hear on those, you know, those monster slow jam videos from back in like the day, you know, the Endless Love and the Michael Boltons and all that. It's like, why do you even have that in a Gundam series? It just throws off the mood, but it just wasn't for this type of series. And why did they choose to play all of the major scenes to the next episode during the end credits? Stuff like that just makes me feel like they knew the series was ending anyway, so they were just like, screw it. Which leads to my last topic, unfortunately on the negative side, and that was the ending. There was a rush to finish the series that you can feel with Gundam X. Once Garrett takes to the space, it really does feel like it was supposed to be so much more that was there to explore before things wrapped up and was sent back earthbound. Not to mention a time skip that most series rarely nail to begin with. Adding a time crunch to something that at first seems like it was so well built up to really does make this all feel jarring in the end. With the series being cut by roughly 10 episodes, there was a lot of room there for them to build on things that felt like it would have been an entire arc. Especially Garrett's involvement with the members of Satellicon in space, an asteroid home for misplaced citizens in space who are introduced and gone before you even notice them. 
there was just so much more that could have been expanded on there. I did enjoy the ending honestly, but it felt like I enjoyed it because you just had to take it for what it is rather than a sense of fulfillment. Thus the staff did the best they could. In conclusion, Gundam X was an unexpected surprise for a series that was taken away too soon. I felt that if it had more time to execute the things it wanted to do properly, especially with the ending, it would have fared a lot better in the eyes of many Gundam fans. Although I was more satisfied with the conclusion after revisiting the series many years later, the effects of the rush production can no doubt be felt once the story really gets going. Yet I still recommend the series because of what it did to execute better than any series that I've seen when it comes to war, and that is show how the world is affected by war once it's done, and how even that is still a process of acceptance and perseverance. Thank you for watching this video on After War Gundam X. I really hope you enjoyed it. And once again, thank you to Right Stuff Anime and Nozomi Entertainment for the opportunity to experience this series in the best quality possible. Be sure to stop by their site with the link that's in the video as well as in the description below for more anime, manga, and collectible goodness. And also be sure to let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop it a like and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And be sure to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I drop my next video. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. But you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that, so thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon.